Hello my friends, this is New Sensei, and today we have a special video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the evolution of modern target archery. Now I've been fascinated in this for quite a while, ever since I started doing archery. Because before I started practicing modern archery, I always thought that archery was English longbows and Mongolian horsebows, and many people still have this perception, and for that I can forgive you. When we look at archery today at the Olympic Games, it looks nothing like archery from the past. We see metal risers and flashy arrows and weird uniforms and all these gadgets, and it looks so far removed from what archery was that many people who view archery are actually offended by it. And I understand this to a large extent. Now, what many people might not understand is how old modern archery actually is. You see, the reason I think many people find modern archery hard to digest is that there is a large gap in our understanding and knowledge of the history of archery. We all know that archery has been around since the dawn of mankind. We know archery has been used as a survival tool, as a hunting tool, and as a weapon. We know about the ancient archers, the Persians, the Greeks, the Romans, the Scythians, the Egyptians, every civilization in every region of the world that use archery. We of course see the advances through the medieval and feudal eras. In Europe, the English longbows, we see crossbows, we see Chinese Manchu bows and Korean bows and Japanese bows. And all these traditional and primitive bows have a very iconic image. So we recognize these things. And yet at some point, we seem to have disconnected the end of archery as a tool of warfare to modern archery. Many people have this misconception that modern archery is a continuation of military archery or war archery. And while modern archery does have a historical origin in the roots of archery, it isn't actually a direct descendant. And let me explain why. As you know, at the end of the medieval period, we see the advent of gunpowder. And as gunpowder, as a weapon, was much easier to produce and train for the average person, we see the loss of archery as an art. Archery was no longer practiced regularly and maintained. Archery therefore became not a tool of warfare, but a tool of recreation, of sport. In the 1800s, and especially we're thinking about going from the English longbow to the Victorian era English longbow, we see the shift where it was the upper class, the aristocracy, that practiced using bows. And these bows were nowhere near the same level as the English war bows of days past. So in the 1800s, during the Victorian era, the Industrial Revolution, we see bows used as sport. And this is where our history picks up. Today we'll be going through a few videos from the archives. Now, some of these are from the British Passage uh, YouTube channel. Some of these are from the World Archery Archive. So of course, I don't own any of this footage all of this can be found on the respective YouTube channels and I'll be looking through some clips of these historical scenes and doing some commentary and analysis. So hopefully you will learn something from this. For those who are archers, you might find this to be quite eye-opening to think about how far we've come since the early days of competitive target archery. And for those who aren't archers, who think that modern archery is a corruption of the old days, you may be surprised to see how far back modern archery goes. So sit back and enjoy. 
Now, our first clip comes from the British Passé Channel, and it is Archery in 1924. This is post-World War I, and arguably perhaps some of the earliest footage of modern target archery. Now, many people who look at archery today think archery is a little strange if it's um, uniformed and it's almost elitist attitude. And what you might not understand is that the practice of archery has always been something that has been seen as majestic and classy. Things like archery whites and wearing uniforms and suits and dresses for the women. This is what archery actually was. It was a sport for the upper class. Now, there are a few things interesting to note here. You can see the arrangement of the field. Now, some people ask about the definition of the word end. In archery, we shoot ends. Every set of arrows is an end. And that terminology uh, comes from this particular field arrangement, where you have targets on both sides of the field. So you would shoot your arrows towards one end, and when you pick up the arrows, you turn around and shoot towards the other end. And that's the origin of that terminology. So you can see that archery, in these days, you're shooting in a large colored circle. The bows are as simple as you can get. These are all long bows. And of course, you can see the technique is fairly distinct. If you go back a bit to the previous scenes, you can see the way that these archers are shooting their bows. Still long distance. Now, it's worth noting that the archery that was used at the Olympic Games prior to this, it had been done a couple of times, but it was dropped at around this time. And the reason why archery was dropped from the Olympic Games was because of the lack of standardization. FETA, or the International Archery Federation, didn't exist in the early days of modern target archery. So the result was that every country, every region, had its own rules. There were different rounds and different formats. So the Olympic competition was a very awkward combination of international rules. And people would turn up and not know how to actually shoot the round that they were uh, playing at the Olympic Games. So you see the reason why Archie was dropped was that there was a lack of international standards. So with the context in mind, let's observe in more detail how these archers actually use their bows. So we go from the very beginning of the video, you can see that this is pretty much a very close approximation to modern technique. You see the arrow on the left side of the bow for a right-handed shooter. This is your simple stick and string. It's a wooden longbow. And the arrows are also wood. The technology to make aluminium and carbon arrows would be decades into the future. And you see, of course, the modern anchor point as well. So we see it's under the jaw. This is target style. Now, the release, of course, the, the refinement of modern technique probably aren't there yet. But yeah, when you talk about how far we've gone, it probably hasn't been that much. The modern art technique, technique has been used for decades. And I suppose it's worth noting the uh, grouping. Now, in fairness, this is a, a fairly decent grouping, but you can see a lot of the archers are going behind the target to find their arrows. So for those of us who are fascinated with the idea of shooting stick and string the old-fashioned way, understand too that if you're going to sacrifice all the uh, advantages of modern equipment, you also sacrifice consistency and accuracy. And for these guys, hitting the target would have been a, a goal. That would have been the sweet spot. Today, we don't just want to hit the target. We want to hit the exact center. So if you want to shoot this style, this is probably as good as you'll get. And as we see later on in the later World Championships where we are shooting uh, wooden bear bows, the standards are much lower than what we have today. 
Our next clip is the Southern Counties Archery Championship from 1937, again from the British Pathé Collection. And you see, you know, over the last decade, nothing's changed. The bows are exactly the same. And you can see that the standards are very much typical of any regional championship today. Using wooden arrows, wooden bows, and the ladies are, of course, having a lot of fun. Now, according to the commentary, the draw weight for these bows are up to around 50 pounds. Um, that's pretty uh, incredible, uh, considering that this is old-fashioned stuff. But, of course, the technology and equipment back then weren't as efficient. So, um, what they would shoot with 50-pound bows would not be as fast as what we have today with much lighter bows and modern materials. Let's take a quicker look at the technique used by these ladies. Of course, the film is sped up. So don't quite get a good feel as to what things look like. Let's actually slow it down for the sake of analysis. Uh, this is more for curiosity than anything else. Let's see some of these ladies shoot. You can see again the uh, target on both ends. So you shoot towards one direction, then the other for each end. So you can see the uh, technique here. The uh, hand is firmly around the straight riser and the anchor point is under the jaw. We see an interesting grip there. We have two over and one under. Um, there are certain variations of the Mediterranean grip used in traditional archery, especially in England back then. So again, the techniques were quite different to what we would see today as conventional. We see uh, this lady over here is shooting a conventional Mediterranean trip, uh, grip. We have the one over and two under split finger, and we see the arrow resting on the left side of the bow for the right-handed shooter. A pretty static release there, and the grouping is, uh, you, know, uh, you know how it is back then, it's pretty dismal today, but back then hitting the target would have been quite an achievement. See, uh, again, that tr the same technique across the line. And not, not a lot of variation. You see, like, the whole T-shape is still very much used in modern archery today. Next, we have the 14th World Archery Championships in 1950 in Copenhagen in Denmark. Again, the footage is owned by British Pathé. So, we see some interesting scenes of all the nations at the World Championship. Of course, a much smaller contingent than what we see today in the World Cups and World Championships. So, we saw some interesting scenes of the uh, archers marching in line. That is actually pretty cool, in my opinion. You, you wouldn't see that today. And it's worth noting the differences in equipment, which we'll see later on. Uh, we, this is 1950, so this is post-World War II, and... We've gone from wooden longbows to wooden longbows and recurves and flat bows and American longbows. So we'll start seeing this variation in the shooting ahead. So here we have the line. And you can see initially that the first uh, batch of archers are shooting what looks like to be basic wooden longbows, as we've seen in the last uh, few decades. So we do see some variations. See the second person in front here. Uh, looks to be using a, well, a slightly uh, reflex longbow, so that isn't that much of a variation. And again, you see, of course, the archer shooting from the left side of the bow for a right-handed shooter. So uh, we've been doing this for decades, if not centuries. This is a fairly normal way to shoot. Now, the technique is still very much similar to modern technique shooting either traditional bare bow or modern recurve today. Uh, we see this is not a traditional longbow. This looks more like a recurve bow. Uh, we see, of course, the much thicker uh, riser in the middle there, and the uh, limbs are definitely recurved. So, and we see arm guards as well, interestingly enough. Uh, I believe he's Swedish, looking at the uh, shirt there. It's black and white, but you can probably imagine the colour scheme. Although it's probably white anyway, with a uh, perhaps a blue and yellow uh, symbol on the shirt. But we can, we, using some conjecture, let's have a closer look at the uh, form. We have the arm guard, that's very prominent here, and we have a very distinct finger tab. Um, so they are using finger protection, and the arrows being shot not off the knuckle, interestingly. So you can see that the knuckles are down here, so there's probably some kind of mini ledge or shelf on the left side of the bow. The arrows are cut very close to the riser, so we have a consistent draw length, and the anchoring technique is 
very similar to modern technique under the chin or jaw and the string is cutting across the lips and the nose we'll see later on that things will change but this is the old technique and it works fine nice release there you can see the uh, strength of the bows it's more the, the american longbow style with the uh, uh not, not the d shape of the longbow but more of the the flat bow limbs And interesting to show this scene uh, of the targets. Now, again, these this is back when Theta was around, so it was standardized. You see that the target is exactly the same as what we shoot today. Um, it's the multicolored face, the gold, red, blue, black, and white. I see this every time I go to the range, and pretty much the same target sizes. So the rounds have become standard. Now, at the time, they've been shooting the uh, probably the 90 meter feet around, or the lady 70 meter feet around, and there are different distances. But worth noting is that spread. That is a very, very large spread. Uh, we can't see whose arrows are whose, but you can see arrows in the white, arrows in the black. That is, again, pretty much the standard of the day. And uh, a contention, arguably, debatably, like, this is the reason why, in my opinion, if we go back to the old days of shooting stick and string and nothing else, look, even at closer distances, um, this is the ladies' feeder, so that's the men's over there, that's 90 meters, I believe, and this, the ladies are 70 meters. The spread of arrows today, this would be a bad end. For them, this probably would have been a good end. Um, just having arrows on the target is probably enough to justify the quality of the archers being at the World Championships. So this is an interesting insight to the way they shot back then, the distances they shot, but also the standards they shot. And like I said, today, this would be mediocre. Uh, a lot of uh, journeyman archers like myself would probably shoot like this at 70 meters or 90 meters. So back then, bare bow, even today, bare bow, this would be incredible. But you have to ask yourself, is this really a competition? Is it really a show of skill to see who has the most arrows on target? And arguably, this is where things really evolved uh, for modern target archery, where the desire to hit the center of the target was a driving force behind the change in technique and the advances in modern archery equipment and technology. And now we're in 1957, the World Championships in Prague, and this time we're looking at the archive footage from FETA, or the World Archery Channel. So, it's only been seven years since the uh, 14th World Archery Championships. You can see, interestingly, the step three method is the standard way to string a bow. Funny how today we have bow stringers and we really frown upon that technique, but that was normal back then, and for a lot of trad bows, still is quite normal. Uh, we see, of course, the uniforms are still very much that formal archery white kind of thing. Though I imagine there's some more decorative shirts over here. But the bows are very interesting. We see more variation in the styles of bows. Uh, we see the arrow inspection there. We see a glove or finger tab sort of thing. And now we see the archers in action. So, uh, let's have a look-see here. Um, there we go. Um, I've made a point about the bow grip, especially in the Olympic swing video, but a lot of people were very critical of modern archers letting the bow drop. And this is exactly what I want people to look at. Uh, the lady in front is using what is, again, a modern style anchor and a modern style grip with a very, very loose grip. Now, with the bows back then, nobody used slings because the bows were balanced. Bows were straight sticks, which went straight down when you dropped them. So if you were holding the bow in the loosest possible way and you let the bow drop naturally, this is what would happen. And there we go. That's the bow drop. I do this today with some of my bows. And that's perhaps the cleanest possible release. Now today, of course, bows are weighted, so they are more front heavy, therefore they'll swing. But even back then, people were still letting go of the bow. It's not a modern invention, at least not a current day. 
We're going to see a close up with the uh, grip there. See the arm guard. We can see the uh, low anchor point and the uh, the glove over there. And we see just underneath the feet of the logo, the grip view. So the arrow is very much now on an elevated shelf. Um, I believe the bow will probably have a cutout. And once you let go, that bow drops naturally there. That's a very clean release. And I imagine, like, not everybody does this. Like, if you see late on the footage, this is not the norm. But this is what a lot of people would do to shoot naturally. You can see again, that's the, the recurve style bow now. One piece, of course. And look at that slide. So this seems to be quite trendy uh, with the wooden longbows of the 1950s and before. Same people hang on to the bow. But the bow drop is very much uh, apparent in this particular world championship. And arguably this uh, era. I see these ladies don't drop the bone, so it's not, again, the, the universal technique. Though with the idea of the loose grip is going to be fairly uh, uh, common. It's interesting to see that the men are fetching arrows and women are still shooting, so they're shooting different sides of the field. We wouldn't see it today. Um, in fact, you probably don't recognize this format today. Um, we still have this format, but instead of shooting the entire round as a tournament, this is the 1440 round, so everybody shoots 144 arrows. Today we have a knockout format, and we'll see later on in the more recent World Championships and events that things have changed to be more spectator friendly. This, is, this would have been a very, very long day for all the archers. We still have a ranking round, it's 72 arrows, not 144, and you then get seeded for the knockout format, but we'll get to that later on. It was interesting to note how like the men just freaky walk around the back. Nice bow there, by the way. And see, whoops. This is where we start seeing some uh, interesting uh, changes in archery technique in terms of the way the shoulders are aligned. Now, this shooter here isn't that far off. You can see the arm is quite high. The shoulder in the front is quite high. Um, and he's anchoring a little higher than in the, uh, the jawline. Um, very strong arm there. That, that is muscle. And the grip is fairly aggressive, so that's a fairly um, uh, high grip. And you can see the way the bow is dropped. So you can see the index finger and the thumb are just looped around the riser very lightly. So when the uh, arrow is loose, the bow is allowed to do what it does. And again, with no sling, the arrow, the archer uh, retains the bow, but the bow is allowed to swing f fairly freely there. Nice close up. Should point out that the, I think 1957 you start seeing oh look at that, that that bow swing. At some point here you start seeing aluminium arrows. I'm not sure it was this world championship or the one right afterwards in 1960s, but this era we start seeing aluminium arrows. Still got wooden bows, but the arrows are modernised. And seeing interesting how they just fetch arrows now. Like still they're still shooting in the in the lanes, but they can walk forward and fetch arrows. The interesting is that there's nothing really here. The quivers are behind their their um uh, their hips. And I mentioned for about technique, right? So you can see this is getting to be a little different from modern technique. Um, firstly, uh, the anchor point, you can see the thumb is locked behind the jaw. Um, there are a lot more variations in anchor point. Uh, some would put the thumb behind the neck, some put behind the jaw. That way you've got a stronger anchor, so you can um, not be pulled back by the weight of the bow. But something unconventional is that shoulder alignment. Today, this would have been a big no, that's a huge form fault. You're putting too much strain on the front shoulder. If you're doing a form check today, this would be horribly wrong. But this was the norm back then. Now, he let down that time, not surprising. So, people, I guess, really wanted to feel in the bow. Now, he's not using uh, the same high shoulder, but the release is a bit static, so he comes straight down and forward. Interesting way. You see, again, the, the way the shoulder is very high. So they have uh, the, the way the bow is designed, this is not exactly a high level compared to the bow. So the variations in equipment are very high. But as we see high variation in technique and equipment, we also see high variation in results. 
one's a bit more conventional there. Again, the, the, the static release is a lot more normal. We'll get a view of the uh, targets and we'll see the standards of the uh, modern uh, feet around. Uh, see if we get a nice close up somehow. Again, the target, the standard. There we go. So this looks like the women's uh, 70 meters, I'm guessing. Wow, women's 70 meters. I mean, again, shooting bare bow of no sights. That's not surprising there. But that's a stand that you're at. It's the world's best at the world championships. And we're spraying blacks, whites. So, again, it's very different to what we would see today. And it doesn't mean that archery become easier. But the standards have become higher. Let's see a few more shots. You see that um, anchor point behind the uh, uh, neck. This is very much outdated. Uh, some archers still do so. Um, a very prominent example today is Viktor Ruban from uh, Ukraine. Um, this is tend to be an Eastern European uh, style of shooting where the uh, anchor point is uh, preferred. I'm not sure what distance they're shooting here, but again, that large spread of arrows. This isn't a grouping anymore. This is just trying to hit the target. And again, we go back to the contention that modern archery is a better reflection of skill because you have more control over where the shot lands. Whereas with the old equipment, it's more of a random chance of hitting a spot on the target. So you're basically trying to hit the entire target, not the middle. And you can see that the spread of arrows reflects that. Next up, we have the 1961 World Championships in Oslo. And now we have color. How's that? We see our nations. How that we could actually recognize the, uh, the Nordic flags now. And we have Japan. Switzerland's over here, France, UK. Uh, this is not the era of Korea yet. That's still uh, a long way away. Korea wasn't always dominant. All right, let's fast forward to some of the shooting. See uh, Sweden there in America. And especially now we have color, we can definitely see the culture of archery whites. Very much like cricket whites, archery whites was the norm. We don't see colourful uniforms. That will come much later on. Hey, we finally see the Swedish uniform. There we go, I was right. The white shirt with the Swedish coat of arms. By the way, hi Sweden. I know many of you watch me from Sweden, so there you go. So, we have some, uh, again, the wooden bows are normal. The arrows, I believe at this point, are aluminium. So, they've definitely become more commonplace. In fact, some of these bows are not wood. It seems these are looking like early uh, metal risers. It looks like it. I can't say for sure. That's definitely a wooden bow. That's a cute little plushie there. The arrows are aluminium now. So they've gone from wood to aluminium. We'll see more technique later. We can see again, even um, with the newer equipment. Wow, look at that spread. And again, this is the world's best. The world championships. And that grouping... I think that's a miss, by the way, this arrow over here might have the wrong target, but uh, that is uh, hard math right there. This is some golds, no nice gold shots there. The arrows are crystal properly, these are definitely aluminium arrows. It's like a, every arrow today is carbon, back then every arrow that was used competitively was aluminium. Oh, nice technique here, I, did, I believe this man has a prosthetic arm. So I can't blame his technique, he does have a prosthetic on his left arm. So this is a, a very much unusual technique and worth mentioning. Because that is something incredible. There you go. So it's got the arrow on the right side. Because he's shooting with a prosthetic. I think that alone is worth um, watching. Doesn't seem that far. I believe this is the 50 meter distance. So they changed target faces. But that, that that is not the uh, big 120cm face. Let's keep ahead a bit. Alright, let's go over here with the ladies. Still the long holds happening for most of the shots. <laughs> that's a very long hold. I mean, today you'd not see someone hold that long. That's crazy. That's like a 10 second hold. And she lets down, which is good. Alright, I'm pretty sure I'm playing normal speed. 
It's a very long hold. So something's changed. I guess people are trying much harder to uh, hit the target now. Standards are probably higher. Especially with the, the change in equipment. <laughs> My goodness, they're really <laughs> getting tired trying to um, hold those, those bows up. Wow, that's quite a long hold. Scores are there. Let's see some of the, the men's techniques. It's wooden uh, recurve. More scoring. Let's see more shooting techniques somehow. Let's have a closer look. It's an interesting game. We see this technique. We have a, a very uh, high, or well, low grip in this case. Um, the sh it's far below the top shoulder. This is definitely not how we'd shoot today. Um, today we'd, we'd, we'd still anchor there, there, but we'd probably have, uh, how, how do I explain the technique? It's like, this is like deformed uh, from a person's point of view. That's a very big hunch. Um, a lot of the old fashioned coaches will probably be familiar with the hunch. That, that's an iconic archer thing, the hunch. We don't do it today. Uh, our modern form has more emphasis on different parts. It's a nice bow here. Look at the shape of this bow. Let's see how number 43A shoots. So that's a more conventional draw there, right? So we've got um, that elbow is in the right position. Uh, shoulder isn't uh, very high. I think the, 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 the commentary in this video talks about how everyone shoots differently. Some things work better than others. Um, this is the American team, by the way, looking at the um, the badge. I see they're shooting gloves. Tabs uh, still weren't really a thing, I guess. And uh, no slings in the moment. We'll see slings later on. It's interesting how hard that arrow rest is. Again, see the bow drop is there. Oh, they're, they're using slings. You can see there are slings on the, the fingers there. Well, there you go. You start seeing slings in the 1960s. Of course, the boat doesn't swing forward, there's no weight, so the boat tips backwards. No, they're all using slings. That seems like to be the Japanese team. My gosh, that's been quite an evolution. They're still almost using uh, wooden recurves. Okay, we've seen that technique there, a bit of a hunch. It seems to be fairly normal, that the hunch kind of gets the shoulders in line behind the arrow. That seems to be their method of getting the line right. Again, today we wouldn't really do this. It's interesting. I believe this is the short distance. This is probably the 30 meter distance. Could be the 50, but I, th I think it's 30 based on the um, the flat trajectory of the arrow. And that might seem quite good, but bear in mind, 30 meters. I mean, today most of us can shoot 30 meters bare bow with modern equipment quite well. So um, that would not be surprising. So at closer ranges, bare bow is actually pretty competitive. That's why you see bare bow used in field tournaments where the targets are like 30 meters or 40 and no more than 50 away. Um, that's more of a competition. But today, competition is 70 meters. So, you know, when people think about, you know, why should we go back to bare bow or wood um, uh, sticks and strings? Well, you, you get only really be competitive at very close distances. Beyond that, the skill ceiling is nearly unreachable. Like, you can't really demonstrate, um, you know, solid, exceptional technique when your arrows and your technique just don't allow you to shoot that precisely. So, this is probably the best you'll get with a bare bow, in my opinion. 1969 World Championships in Valley Forge, mostly known for its crazy hairstyles. That is so in 1970s. Now, 1970s, uh, we'll see, or rather 1960s, we'll see, um, again, the aluminum arrows are pretty much standard. But we, in this point, the end of the 1960s and beginning of the 1970s, we do see another invention, another addition. And you just see it right here in this scene. Do you recognize this thing there? Right on top of the riser? Yes, we start seeing stabilizers. Uh, stabilizers become the norm uh, for archery in this era. So before the 1960s, it's all wooden bare bows, but now we start seeing aluminium arrows being commonplace and stabilizers being common. Um, I believe this is uh, one of the designers from Bear Archery way back then, 
and again we start seeing the stabilizers in action here so aluminium arrows are norm we still have wooden risers and they're very large wooden risers but we start seeing archers put weights at the end of their bow we also start seeing sights i should point out the sights aren't the ones that stick out anymore the sights are actually on the rise itself so there's no extension to the sights that'll be much later on technique very much resembling modern technique now they've got sights that's a very big difference in the previous world championships we start seeing people shoot with fairly awkward shoulder alignments but the sights have now allowed the archer to align the arrow differently to get different body alignment shoulder alignment we start seeing the top and bottom stabilizers which is some archers with the long rods or the medium rods i think it's the japanese team which will be surprising um, so we still, we still have a lot of variations in archery equipment, especially in the age of stabilizers. Some people don't use them. So we see this traditionalist point of view, right? Some people don't like these stabilizers. Um, I believe they're all using sights. There's no reason why they shouldn't be using sights. And these are the Japanese women, believe, with the, uh, gloves. Um, so the gloves are fairly bulky gloves. Not, um, actually, no, they're pretty normal gloves. Uh, but you don't see the finger tabs too much later on, interestingly enough. Skip through a bit. Hey, the, they have the field event here as well. You don't normally see field anymore. Field is a separate event in most cases. You don't normally see field as part of the uh, championships. Uh, interesting. Uh, the, the grip is a bit archaic compared to what we have today. The anchor point is very modern. The hairstyle is very 1970s. And the, uh, the stabilizer and the side stair, by the way. You see on the back of the riser, on the belly of the bow, the sight is there. Uh, one of our archers, one of our senior archers, does have his bow from the 1960s, so that would have been the norm back then. And this is surprisingly epic. This is like a TV series, like serial, where you have like the one still frame for like five different scenes. And <laughs> this is the, this, I believe it has to be 90 meters they're shooting, um, or even 70 meters. Again, we see the standard is still very much a widespread. Um, the groupings are all over the target. This is some technique here. Oh, a sky draw. That would be not... Actually, no, that would be in fairness. They shoot a long distance. That wouldn't be a sky draw. Yeah, to these days, they'd be penalized, I reckon. <laughs> but uh, back then, things were a little different. Let's see another view of the stabilizers there. Oh, yeah, fairly modern technique with the shoulder alignment. Uh, the arrow rest is on top there. Starts on the bottom of the bow. Interesting. Okay, the archery whites are still uh, normal here. And the, the whole point of this is, for those of you uh, who don't, aren't sure, don't realize, it's high score wins. Um, it's not a knockout format. It's not a set point system. It's high score wins. What an interesting stance that is. Very action man like. Yeah, high score wins, which means that if you're at the very top, you had to hang on to your lead and shoot excellently all day. The big change today with the knockout format is you just have to shoot better than your opponent. In this case, you have to shoot better than everybody else and be the best for the entire day. That would really prove it was the best archer. Now, we'll go to the 1973 event, and there are a few things which should be very interesting. This is subtitled, A Return to the Olympics. So this particular sequence is a pre-championship training camp, but you'll see something very familiar here. What's this? An extended sidebar? And a long rod stabilizer? Well, this is very familiar, isn't it? Let's look on this shot over here. Recognize something? Do you recognize this? Sightbar, long rod, finger sling, and clicker. Welcome to modern freestyle archery. There we go, 1973. It wasn't that long since the last video, which is in 1969, when people were still using wooden bows, and very much people are using wooden bows. Plunger button, I believe. It's a bear bow, too. My goodness, that is classic design. Wooden bows of stabilizers. I mean, we don't really see this anymore, do we? I mean, you still can. 
and some people are shooting like really old bows and really old fashioned equipment will still do this uh but you know we don't really see um a standard and stuff you can see like there are top bottom stabilizers there's long rods there's no v-bars yet so people were still very much experimenting with uh stabilizer setups weight distributions balance technique uh, nowadays we shoot more two eyes bit of a twitch there you can see a finger tab and a dynamic release it's very much what we do today they're both slightly different the technique and the coaching is the same, and I, I do this in my coaching too. So that, that is exactly what we would do to someone who's learning. You can see the sight, interesting, this is the sight ring rather, is beneath the uh, horizontal rod. The top stabilizer is there. You can see the grip, open grip, the finger sling. That's pretty much a modern draw and shoulder alignment. Dynamic release, nice and clean. And they both like to drop forward. And now we see some of the uh, actual championship shooting. And this is what you expect to see on a typical shooting line in the competition. Still in the archery whites, of course. That hasn't changed yet. Interesting to see again these wooden bows of stabilizers. And again, the bow drops forward. We saw in the previous uh, championships in 1950s that the bow was able to drop down and uh, they could swing the bow forward, but now we've got stabilizers, the bow swings forward. And that's a natural result of the addition of weights. Let's see this guy shoot. Very much a modern setup. See that uh, that C grip? We'll see that it's a very unusual bow. I'm not sure if it's legal today, but the C grips were kind of a really trendy thing back then. Very exceptional. That's very much a uh, modern technique. So we're close. There we go. That, that, that's a C grip there. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with the history of the C-Grip bow, so can someone fill me in? Please post in the comments, because that is really fascinating stuff. Now see the shooting line, again the archery whites, lots of wooden recurves. See some stabilizer rod sticking out. Yeah, very much a modern technique. Moscow Olympics 1980. Hey, look, they're still using step through methods to uh, string the bows. Bow squares are now a thing. And we start seeing the V bars on the, uh, and look, offset V bars. And I believe the carbon arrows start making an appearance in this uh, era. So we've gone from aluminium uh, arrows and wooden bows, aluminium bows and aluminium arrows. And now we'll start seeing aluminium bows with carbon arrows. And very familiar V-bar setups. These still are top stabilizers, they're very popular. But the V-bars are becoming normal now. That's aluminium, definitely. You can see the V-bars are there. The rise is very much what we would recognize. Um, they're, they're a distinct pattern to manufacturing, and a lot of these would be, would be uh, magnesium risers or aluminium risers. You can see how things have changed. I mean, this is a left-handed shooter. We've got the the extended side. We've got the clicker down there, and a finger sling as well. Yep, that is uh, very much modern. Interesting before, I think you had an offset uh, V-bar. Yeah. Our last shooter. So the V bar's up top there. So uh, again, we see some really weird stand. I think that's a V bar down there and a V bar up there. I mean, nowadays we kind of go crazy on V bars, but um, back then it was even worse. Chess guards are being used. Finland's still a strong country back then. <laughs> Lots of good Finnish archers. We've got a, a rear mounted um, weight there. Wow. There's some really intricate stabilizer patterns. I 
I mean, it might seem awkward now, but these were championship winning shooting techniques. And, like, this is probably, like, the, the last set of bows you can probably buy second hand. I mean, I, I've seen a few of these lying around. Some of like Yamaha bows and early Hoyt bows, the, the first Hoyt medalist. Oh, man. That is vintage. That is vintage. And look at this. I mean, this is 1980s, right? And this is basically every modern riser design today. That's incredible. That is basically an analogue of what we would do today. Beautiful. <laughs> I say beautiful, a lot of people don't like this because it's too modern. Fair enough too, I understand that. We have a lean back there. Quite a few archers had, had, a, had a peculiar lean back to get the alignment right. I think uh, Rick McKinney, the, the American champion, had a very similar technique too. Very clean line there. Oh, look at that, beautiful. I believe this is probably the uh, 30 meter distance, considering the, um, oh, it might be 50 meters. That's not 30 meters, that's 50 meters. That's perfectly flat too. The standards are basically what they are today. They're using modern equipment. Yeah, that, that, that that's the ACM target face, which is shot at, the, at uh, 50 meters and 30 meters. That is... Pretty much on par with uh, top level. Even today, like most like top level shooters will probably shoot like this. The standards probably match what it is today. Of course, we've got no more carbon arrows and better equipment. But um, this is the norm now. This is the, the format which we'll be using. Kisser buttons are very much trendy back then. These days, not so much. You can see why they use. Um, like today, like not many people use them. Uh, but they were trendy back then because it gave you a reference point. I mean, back then you you had your nose, your lips, and your anchor point. But that was like the one thing you would use to refer to reference everything. Um, everything else was still used, but the kisser button was quite exclusive to Zero. Have to click on slow motion. Better view to click over here. You see the elevated rests. Not the plastic ones. The plastic ones are very popular back then as well. Click will go. No, we didn't see that time. But yeah, that's very much a modern technique. The bows are slightly different, but the designs are very much the same. So there we go, 1980s. And now we reach 1984, the Los Angeles Olympic Games. This particular Olympic Games has a unique nostalgia for me. Now, I wasn't born during this time, but my dad had a book from the 1984 Olympic Games. And this book had previews and explanations for sports and the rules. And for the first time, a very young me... Uh, read through this book and saw archery. It would be a couple of decades before I actually could make sense of it in real life and do it, but now that I've, I'm seeing the footage, I can relate the nostalgia of seeing what was on the page. I still have the book somewhere. I think I have it here. I might find it later. But there we go, Los Angeles. What has changed? Well, uniforms have changed. We see color on the uniforms. And we see color on the risers. We see much more fancy aluminium risers. We see Hoyt Eastern, a very much the Vogue uh, uh, manufacturing brand. And I believe some of these would be Yamahas as well. There were a lot more manufacturers back then. But the technique, again, is getting closer and closer to modernization. We see the stabilizer setups are very much modern. Some are using um, hanging or swing stabilizers. You don't really see them today. We see a lot of the two-tone grips and risers. Top stabilizers are still very um, popular. I believe that's a South Korean team. The, the South Korean women's team have always been successful. The men's were only successful in like past the 1988, I believe. But the women's were always strong. It's incredible watching these people. Let's just zoom forward a bit. And that is the big target face. So I believe it's up to the 70 meter setting. I'm guessing. Yeah. 
okay, that that is a very good standard for seventy meters. We reach modern standards, carbon arrows, I believe. Are oh, getting there very close to the carbon era. I mean, uh, Rick McKinney used use ACEs back in the nineteen eighties, and like they're still very good arrows today. And Eastern were really leading the front there. There we go. So we have the aluminium arrows, the color ones, and the center one is the carbon arrow or the carbon aluminium alloy. So that that would be. If I'm not mistaken, an ACE. And I shot these arrows. I mean, like my coach had these in the 1980s. So there we go. We've got carbon, I've got aluminium. So a lot of the archers were using, were using aluminium, but carbon was starting to make an appearance. That's an ACE. Come on, it has to be. I believe that, that, that's, that's Rick McKinney's um, item too. Is that, is that Rick McKinney? I, actually, I'll be wrong this one. But um, yeah, that is vintage stuff. <laughs> Look at the, uh, the sight ring there. Well, well, you would never point the camera today. That's a no-go. Interesting aperture, no dot. Today there'd be a dot in the middle, a uh, red uh, fiber. Back then, it was a line using the circles. It's something you still do today. You can still align using the, uh, the the concentric rings, so you don't need a dot there. Yeah, the standard today is good. <laughs> this is this is modern archery. Finger tabs are the go. Oh, that's a bad shot. Ah, you see bad shots. There we go. Ah, oh, big target face. That's probably the uh, 70 meters again. That's the uh, Chinese team, I believe. Oh, man. It's good seeing this. I know people like vintage and nostalgia, and I, I really appreciate and admire that too. But seeing... This is why... Modern archery, oh, the Korean men's. This is why modern archery is the way it is today. Because the goal of archery as a sport is to hit the target more precisely. Some Paralympics here. Not Paralympics, but wheelchair archer. I don't think there was a separate Paralympics yet. Um, but yeah, the goal is to hit the target. So when the equipment allows the archer to intentionally hit the target closer and closer in the middle, then that's a natural progression of archery. Uh, if you go back to stick and string, like I said earlier, it comes down to random placement. There's very little control that the archer has. Here, you can see every shot that goes in the middle is intentional. It's not done for the archer. The archer has to work very hard for it. But at least now they know they can control the fate of the arrow. It's no longer given the chance. And this is very much... The final, you know, leg to the development of modern archery today. Let's skip forward around 12 years and we get to Atlanta 1996, the next American Olympic Games. Um, the equipment is stuff that I'm starting to recognize. It's still vintage stuff, though, of course, we start seeing some more modern riser designs. It's the South Korean women's team. Um, you can see that the, the white makeup isn't really uh, trendy yet. But uh, you can see the uniforms, uh, again, we see the color is starting to be more apparent. Um, the bows are very colorful. We see plunger buttons. Uh, carbon arrow, I believe that is an X10 uh, with spin wings. So they've been around for quite a while. And the standard, this is the 7 round. round. Um, they stopped shooting um, the old feet around. They changed over during this period. So um, you still had total score, but you now shot knockout. Uh, so before you would shoot, uh, as in like the, the, the high score wins on the whole day, now we have the one-on-one -on -one match play. Uh, the set points weren't used to, I think, Beijing in 2008, uh, whereas this would have used um, the total score. So you can still like shoot exceptionally well, um, and you wouldn't lose um, necessarily because of a single set. But um, very interesting to see. Um, they have the cameras, by the way. If you wonder why the spider or the set of the target is so big, there's a camera there. Uh, and they stopped putting the camera there when people started shooting it. <laughs> but this is the 70 meter round. Fascinating stuff. And again, the standards are now exceptionally high. And men generally should bend than women. But even when you see the women shooting here, the Korean women are always good. 
I mean, like, if you just recall, like, um, in the last World Cup where, or the previous World Cup where Shanghai Jun shot three X's in a row, they were always, oh, damn, that's right in the camera. <laughs> and that's why I stopped using cameras. There we go, that's the camera view. Oh, my goodness. Can't get much better than that, really. <laughs> and just to finish up, I think it's only right to see South Korean women's again in action. This is the 2017 World Cup Championship in Mexico City. And we have Chang Hai Jin versus uh, Serena Perova from Russia. And yeah, this is where we are today, 2017 or 2018 now. Um, the, you know, the, the equipment is pretty much cutting edge. The techniques refined. And here we are, after, what, nearly a hundred years of uh, archery development. We've got all these fancy, colourful stadiums, great technology, Falco Eye for shot placement. We have all these new limb materials. And of course we have YouTube. We have Archery TV. Oh, that is just amazing. That is just amazing. And so we've come to the end of our journey. You know, it kind of makes you ask, you know, what, what, what will we see in, uh, in archery in the next uh, few years? I mean, it's taken, you know, 80 years for us to go from, you know, wooden longbows to, you know, carbon fiber and aluminium space age materials and supremely high standards. I want to remind people that, uh, you know, just because Chang Hai Jin can shoot like three X's in a row doesn't mean everybody can. We we see a, a huge increase in the skill ceiling, and that's really what it is. Um, you know, these archers, you know, are the world's best, and the world's best can now do this. Um, it's amazing to see the evolution, both in the format, the technology, as well as you know the the way we can view these experiences today. So there we go. This is archery from 1924 to 2017. And so we've come to the end of our evolution of modern archery. Now, of course, this isn't saying that archery won't evolve, but what is the next step? Now, personally, looking back, I've, I've found this amazing. Um, there were just so many things which you know, I didn't know. I mean, like, like many of you watching, there are things which you take for granted because either you started at the modern time like I did, or you're looking back in, with the nostalgia glasses, looking back at the archery the way you think it was. And I think for a lot of us, looking at the footage from the archives shows us that, you know, things aren't as old as we think they are. And in some cases, things aren't as new as we think, as we think they are. Um, it was just really interesting for me to see, well, two things really. Firstly, the kinds of standards and groupings which people were getting with the old equipment and you can understand why people wanted to be more precise. They wanted to use better arrows and better bows and better sights because it's frustrating when you don't hit your target. You could be a very skilled and consistent archer but when your equipment let you down and you couldn't guarantee that you could hit the target it's not really competition as much as it is survival. Whereas now, of course, we see people hitting golds consistently, but they also know that if they shoot poorly, they'll hit a 9 or an 8 or a blue. And that's where we are today. We know that we can shoot very high scores. And it's entirely our fault when we don't. We can't blame the equipment anymore. So that was really interesting to see how people back then shot versus how people today shot. The other thing I found really interesting was where modern equipment began to be introduced. Things like the materials, aluminium arrows, uh, metal bows, finger slings, clickers, stabilizers. And really, it's in the 1970s where things really came together. Modern archery former technique have been used since the 1920s and before that, but the modern equipment really took shape when archery came back to the Olympics in the 1970s. So 
that was my reflection. I thought that was really interesting. Um, I I learned a lot, you know, in retrospect, and I hope you did as well. Um, and hopefully it adds a lot of questions, uh, and then hopefully it kind of encourages you to think more about archery in an open mind. And uh, for those of you who, you know, practice whatever archery style you practice, that you continue to enjoy your style. Um, archery is so diverse, there are so many ways of doing it that this isn't the only way. You know, modern sport archery isn't the only kind of archery you can do. Uh, but the fact that this is now what we see as the primary sporting form of archery, there are lots of things which we don't understand because we don't do it. But for those who do, we can appreciate the hard work that goes into archery as we know it. This is New Sensei. Thank you for joining me on my journey. I hope you learned something from this, and I hope I see you next time.